Hi, this is Chris at OPT with part four of our introduction to Maxim DL series. And no, you don't have to adjust your set. This is what a CCD dark frame typically looks like. What you're actually seeing is all of the stuff you don't want in your image. This is what's known as a calibration frame. What this particular frame is, is a 15 minute long exposure with the shutter closed on the camera. Darks and other calibration frames have been covered previously, but just to give you an idea, what I'm showing is how to actually manipulate the data, use these frames to calibrate an image. Now, I tend to be a little lazy when I'm calibrating, so I usually just shoot darks and flats. Many people recommend shooting full bias frames as well, and if I wasn't in a rush to get as much color data as I could before the moon came up this particular night, I would have shot some bias frames as well. But we've got our darks here, and then here's a representation of one of the flats. Now what you'll see is this image is brighter in the center and gets darker in the corners. The other thing you'll note is it doesn't get evenly darker in the corners. It's actually darker towards one side. That just has to do with the way illumination falls in the telescope system that I'm using as it reaches the camera. So this is not a problem necessarily. A lot of people freak out over having a flat frame that doesn't look completely even, but uh, hey, if it subtracts from your image and it corrects what's in there, then it did its job. The other thing you'll notice is I need to clean my filters because I've got a lot of big dust specks. And actually, I don't think these are on my filters. These are instead on my actual cover glass on my sensor. This is what you don't want in your image and taking flats will help remove it. Now if we look, I have some images here of the Eagle Nebula I shot, part of the data from a recent image that uh, actually got an APOD a couple months back. So if you look at it, you'll note there's lots of little dots around there. Some of those are stars, but a lot of those are hot pixels. Now, again, a lot of people look at this and say, oh, is your camera defective? There's a whole lot of things there that you don't want, but it's possible to actually calibrate it out. So even if your image looks like this with all these hot pixels, it can often be corrected if you're using a CCD with a set point cooler where you can control the temperature you're shooting at. So if you have this, you have blue, green, and red images, and red of course being the brightest given that the nebula is red in color. So what we want to do first, I'm going to close the dark frame and the flat frame. And all I have are blue, green, red, blue, green, red, and blue and red. Unfortunately, I didn't get my third green that night. So I'll show you a couple different ways of stacking the data, given that I don't have three to do a median on one of the stacks. So the first thing you want to do is go to process and set calibration. Now I've already preset this, but you can create a folder with bias, dark, and flat options, or auto. If you have a folder with all the frames, you can actually ask it to grab all the useful frames and create these. The good thing about Maxim DL is if you choose the option of bias, dark, flat, or light when you shoot the data, it will tag the images and allow it to be remembered. And it looks at the time, the image size, the binning, and the temperature in order to best match that data with the light data you've shot that night. So in this case, I've created a dark, which will be a master of nine dark frames, and I have flat frames for each color here. So now, if you have these set up and you've put the files in the right places, all you have to do is hit process, calibrate all, and it'll go through each and every image and there you go. You see, it took out quite a bit of the hot pixels, not all of them, but most of them. So just to give you an example, I'll just hit undo. That's what my image started like. Hit it again, and it cleans it up. So once you've calibrated your data, it's time to align and stack. Now, this is not the most efficient way of doing it, but it does allow you to control how you stack each color individually. So in this case, I go to the stack menu, I add images here. Now this will grab only from open images. So in this case, I only want to select the three blue images. Hit okay. 
We don't do auto calibrate or color convert or any of this because I already calibrated manually. If you go to the align option, I like to use auto star matching. If you have a lot of stars in your image, this is usually the easiest way. It'll look at the star positions in each of the frames and automatically line them up. For combine, because I have three, I want to use a median. If you have more, you can use a sigma clip or other options, but you usually don't want to use an average because any satellites or excess hot pixels may get left in your image with an average. If you hit go, what it will do is combine the three frames into a single master frame right here. If you notice, it's a whole lot cleaner than even any of the individual frames. So I've got this saved. What I'm gonna do just to clear things up is eliminate the three blue frames I used. Now we wanna process and stack one of the other colors. You have to remember to remove this item because otherwise it'll try to add the images from the previous action. If you go add here, I grab green, green, and I only have two here. So a line can be the same, but for combination, I have to go with an average Unfortunately, you need a minimum of three frames to do a median. So I'm gonna have some hot pixels left in this one. As you can see, there are a couple hot pixels here and here, but it is what it is. So I eliminate that and that. Okay, now I have to make one more stack here. And this is with my red frames. Grab that, that, that. Okay, align, set it to median. Go. Now median of course takes the median value of the three frames. So as long as there's enough movement between frames, it will eliminate hot pixels from showing up. As you can see, I must have not had too many tracking errors because some of these hot pixels still lined up even after a median of three. The more frames you stack, the better the median filter or sigma clip filter will be at rejecting outliers. So now I have three files. I have a group 1B, group 2G, and a group 3R. And these are, of course, my images. Now they don't perfectly line up. If you look at it, my blue is shifted by a little bit, but that's okay. So now at this point, what we want to do is go to the color tab and combine color. So it automatically grabs the red, green, and blue and combines them here smart enough to do that, but you'll notice that the stars don't line up. So even though you've aligned each channel to itself, you have to make sure to align star matching here and hit OK. And it will align the three channels with each other. You can adjust the ratio of the channels here. It's normally set one to one to one, but if you know that your camera is a little weaker in the red, you can change that to say 1.2 if you want a punchier red color. But as I'm using filters that are designed to correct the color for my camera type, I'm just gonna leave that alone. Hit OK, and now we have our color image. Now this, of course, just shows part of the data. One of the problems with CCD is you have so much data to deal with that you can only see a little bit of it at a time. Most monitors aren't calibrated to handle 16 bits of color data. But you can see, if you zoom in on the histogram, you can adjust the black point very carefully, and you can see that there is reddish nebula stretching way down into the shadows here. And I have a bit of a light pollution gradient. That's something that can be corrected later. But there you go. At this point, what you can do is save your file as a TIFF or a FITS image and then move it on to another program for more processing. I generally tend to save my images as 16-bit TIFF format and then that lets me move it to Photoshop. And if you've seen my Photoshop processing videos, you have an inkling about how I process that kind of data. Well, that's all for part four. Once again, this is Chris at OPT. Thanks for watching.